Welcome to Mark's Madness Regional Boys Basketball Games to talk about. We're on to the state for girls. As always, lots to dive into. So let's get right started talking about Tuesday's Kettering Regional. We've had two great games. You can catch on the West Ohio Sports Network. One of them, Marion Local, Jackson Center. You were on the call. Flyers get the win. They're on to the regional finals. Matt, they did a really, really good job of following what Coach Guttemiller wanted to do. They took the ball inside repeatedly. And I you know coaches use this term, repost. Throw the ball into Bruns. Throw the ball into Kanapke. They throw the ball back out to the guard. They repost inside. They get a little bit better advantage inside. The ball comes back inside. They scored. They had, what, 31 points between them, I think, and close to 31 rebounds as well. They were just dominant players inside. Marion Local using their height to get to the regional finals. Now they'll face what's turning into a familiar opponent yeah. for them. They lost to Tri-Village last year at this round. So what do they need to do to get over the Patriots this week? Well, I, th I think, you know, that you look at that score last year, it was 60-something to 40-something, and that's how Tri-Village wants to play. They want this to be an up-tempo game with a lot of points on the board. The Marion Local Fires will want to keep the score a little bit lower. They'll want to keep the thing where they can get the ball inside and use their height, in, height inside, their size advantage inside, and slow the pace of the game down. If the game is in the 40s, perhaps low 50s, I think it favors Marion Local. It gets to the 60s again, it favors Tri-Village. A great season for Rushi comes yes. to an end. They were a, a great team all year long, and at this point of the year, you're just going to lose some good teams because there's only so many spots left. That's correct. And in fact, I, as I watched that game, I kept waiting for a big run out to occur. I, I know both teams have scored a lot of points through the course of the season. It was just a 59-50 game, and a lot of those were free throws made late by Tri-Village. You just kept waiting for a, a press or a full-court game and an up-and-down game. Instead, it was a half-court possession type game, and Tri-Village prevailed. So they'll take on each other on Friday, Marion Local and Tri-Village. Marion Local has earned its spot here for sure because if you go back to the district final, they had a battle with Spencerville. Yes. And in that game, I know, feels like a long time ago now, but me and you haven't gotten to talk about <laughs> it. That was, that was a pretty great game. It really was. And, of course, I think, you know, when you're looking at maybe seniors come through in that particular situation, it just felt as the game went along, the bigger, stronger kids were going to win out, and that's what happened. I think that Spencerville got a little bit wore down because of the, you look at Rethman, you look at, at uh, Seitz and Greaser, those are good-sized guards yeah. that you're playing against out front, not just tall, but with some physical presence as well. I think they eventually wore uh, down Spencerville a little bit. They got the ball inside, of course, as they typically do. I think it was a good win, but a well-fought game in Spencerville. Had a really good year, and watch out for the Bearcats over the next couple seasons. They are still pretty young. Staying in Division Four, another good regional at Bowling Green last night. Two good games. First yep. one, Wayne Trace wins in double overtime against Plymouth. Ethan Linder, 44 points. 44 points, and of course he did part of that on a wheel that wasn't working very good. He came out a little bit with some knee problems. Um, took him out for a while. He eventually came back in and finished it up. And of course, that will be a major concern going into their game coming up this weekend because you want to be firing at all cylinders when you play in a regional championship. And they will take on Delphi St. John's in that regional title game. Now, Delphi St. John's is playing fantastic defense. It's been a big part of Coach Elwer's game plan throughout. They've now won, I believe it's, I think it's 10 in a row they're up to now. And it stems a lot from their defensive play. Well, Coach Elwer always does a really good job of preaching defense. He's got his guys really to buy into that this year. They don't turn the ball over very often. Their guard play is solid. Uh, Conley didn't score much last night, but had, did other things for them well. He's been scoring a lot of points for them. When I saw him a week ago, I was really impressed with the replay of the sophomore, Krieger. He's really starting to come around and fill a role in the post for them as well. This will be a really good matchup, and again, it kind of comes down to pace of the basketball game. Wayne Trace will prefer something that goes up and down a little bit more, and Delphi St. John's will prefer something a little bit slower. I know one thing, Mark Miller and I are going to be there to talk about it. It's going to be a good one. We're looking will forward be. to that game. And we'll take a look at some plays from Delphi St. John's defense a little later on when we let Mark break down his plays that he does so well. Now, Division Three. this is a big game. Yep. Taping this on Wednesday, so the game will be played later tonight, and you can see it on WOSN. LCC OG, of course, they're meeting in the regionals. They always meet in the they regionals. They always do. Yeah, they do. And, of course, this is an OG team that kind of was a young team early in the year. They got Noah Bramlage and a bunch of guys playing around him were predominantly JV players a year ago. They've gotten a lot better. They struggled with LCC in the regular season game. See what happens now. I think part of it comes down to Trey Cobbs and how his shoulder is, is feeling. He didn't start the other game, but played a lot of minutes in their district final game. See, because Trey Cobbs is such an important part offensively and defensively for them, whether he's able to compete at a high level or not. That LCC district title game against St. Henry was a game of runs in which LCC yep. kind of jumped out to a lead. St. Henry answered, and then LCC came out on top. 
Do you think this game, LCC OG, is going to be a game of runs as well? Well, that's how both teams have played throughout the course of the year. They both get pressure defense. Uh, I think a little bit more trapping situations from uh, OG than from LCC, but pressure defense is a key to both of them, and then they like to go in transition. I think both teams would like to play at that pace. It could well be a high-scoring game, and if that's the case, runs will be a part of it. Division two now. A lot of interesting things going on in Division two because Salina is taking on yet another Western <laughs> Buckeye League foe in defiance. This time yeah. it'll be in the regional semis. And, and I'm not sure that's something that, that you really like to have. You know, if you're Salina, you're playing all these guys you've already played all year long. By now, you get into the regionals. You want to play somebody different. Yeah. Of course, they did beat Scott the other day, and uh, Defiance beat Scott the other day. But Salina has played what all? Uh, it's been all WBL. All WBL foes yeah. that come out of that. I think it's helped them a little bit, Matt, you know, because they're playing teams they're familiar with. Their defense has been so good. I saw them play very well defensively against the St. Mary's the other day. They were just so solid defensively. A couple transition baskets kind of blew the game open. We're going to show a little bit later on when we get to our highlight segments. But uh, I think they're playing very, very well right now. They've got six or seven guys that are contributing. And for defiance, and there's an old saying in coaching, you know, nobody's ever as good or as bad as the night you scout them. Uh -huh. I've seen defiance twice, and they haven't played at their best either That's night. That's because they know you're there. Now, that must be, that's probably what it is. Yeah. So I'm not sure I've seen the good defiance team. They've won 20 plus ball games. They have to be yeah. better than the nights that I've seen them this year. So I'm looking forward to seeing how they play against Salina again. Well, January 16th, a four yep. point win for the Bulldogs. So the rematch should in be Salina. In because Salina. Because remember, Salina played everybody at the top of the conference at home. Right. And that's where they got defiance. So yeah, it, it'd be interesting to be not a neutral floor what happens. All right, let's talk Division One now. I'm a senior Spartans. They've yep. got a huge game coming up Toledo St. John's round three. They fell. They're, they're only two losses. I was looking at their schedule with their full complement right. of players. Remember, they lost to Wapak in right. the opening game of the season, didn't play a handful of guys. They've come to Toledo St. John's. There's only two losses this year. Yeah, and, and I, I was talking with Mark Coons about this a little bit while earlier. Mark reminded me this is 10 consecutive times the Spartans have lost uh, to a Toledo St. John's team, eight in the track and a couple tournament games from a while back. So there's been a while since they've been able to defeat Toledo St. John's. The Spartan defense, I think, is the key because they have played well defensively in the tournament. They shut Finley down very well, did a nice job against a very solid Ashland team. I think it starts with defense, and Coach Simpson's got his guys doing that. Question is, can they overcome a St. John's team that's basically playing a home game? Right. Any advantage? That was my next question for you. What's the advantage yep. playing in Toledo? I mean, Lima Senior, we got to travel. Yeah, we do. You know, you get on the bus for a while. That's not, I don't think, is a really big issue because they play so many track games when they're going yeah. up I-75 anywhere. I think where the, the change comes is they're playing in an arena-type setting now at the right. University of Toledo. You have that wide open spaces behind the baskets where you're not used to that in a typical high school gym, such as Finley or Liberty Benton, I should say, where they've been playing their their, their district games, it's a different scenario, a different environment to shoot in, and that can affect some teams. And Toledo St. John's has played on that floor before and is much more used to it. I know they're looking forward to what's going to be a very big and exciting game for Lima Seniors, probably the, one of the biggest games they've, they've played in, in a while. Yeah, and I wouldn't worry about the Spartan crowd. They'll travel. Right. You know, they'll have their people there, and then they'll be out in full force like they always do for the Spartans. Uh, just questions whether they can get over the hump or not. This is a good team, and of course, they're all very young. They'll be back at this probably again next year, so we'll see how it plays out with St. John's. All right, Mark, you ready to take a look I at am. a couple of yes. plays? So let's get started with that Salina fast break, a, a, a really impressive fast break for Salina, and it, it led to some transition points that really changed the game. Here's the rebound. Here's the lengthy outlet pass, and you can see the, the nice fill down the middle by Caleb Hoying. It's set up by the first long pass because the defender – Number 22 here is supposed to be out on the wing, but because he can't get back quickly enough with the long pass, the defender from inside has to come out, Czar, and that opens up the, the driving area for the nice pass that ends up in the hands of Caleb Hoying. Similar play here off the miss. Salina gets in transition. This time Ryan Hoying gets his own rebound. There's one pass, and here comes the second one right here. You can see the defenders have all gone the left-hand side of the floor, they, they got the first pass break off of the solely with the pass. This is set up by a couple of dribbles. What an advantage to have a 6'3 guy who can handle the basketball. The one-handed pass, you can see the defense all staring, and here comes Mater's cross-court pass um, to Laffin, and that's a, just a really good finish for him. That's a really well done, and that part of the game was important because the score was relatively close. Now let's take a look at some charges, and I don't know if you've seen that dunk yet or not, but wow. But yeah, it, the charge was the call, and it, it you is, believe it was correct, right? It is correct, because in high school basketball, that little circle doesn't mean anything. And you can see the defender is set, um, and, and he has the basketball. He goes up and does commit the foul. That's a good call in high school basketball. He's right there waiting on the contact, and you can see that that is the correct call, I believe. Now, with that circle there that you have in college basketball, it would have been a little bit different. 
Here's another one. This one's a little bit shakier. Uh, we're going to get the charge call inside. You can see the defense taking the charge. There are a lot of them in this one. He catches that with his left shoulder. The question is, was he moving or not? That's a little bit uh, closer. This one's not. That's clearly a charge right there. Lower the shoulder and just barrel over the defender. And that's a little bit better call. I think a little bit easier call to make. See that clearly the defender's feet are set. He takes his blow with his shoulders parallel to the dribbler. That's a good call. That's Austin Hine taking both charges he for took both of St. John's. Yeah, and and we've we've right. talked about, right, if you're going to play defense for Coach Elward, you're going to play physical, aggressive defense like that, and taking charge is a part of it. They did a nice job with that. If you saw in the highlight there, Coach Elward's up in the background in that second he round, jumping up and down because he knew what a big play that was at that point. Last night's game against Cardinal Stritch, Stritch got the first two points, then Delphi St. John's went on a 13-2 run, or 13-0 run, run, to be winning 13-2. And that was, they had two points after the first quarter did stretch. So yeah. just amazing defense. And when, when you put that kind of pressure on your opponent, it makes it really difficult. Well, you know, the key to that, Matt, is they had to do it for lengthy stretches of time in the basketball game, too, because in that first quarter, Stritch tried to hold the ball and right. make them come out and play. And sometimes you got to get those defensive breakdowns because you, you play defense for such a long time period. But they did not do so that night. They, they still stayed in their defensive position and shut them down. And a good win for them. All right, so regional guys, yep. let's talk state girls because state girls. we've got three area teams yep. left. Started both two in Division Three, one in D4. And Division Three has Versailles taking on the number one team in D, in D3. And that's going to yeah. be a tough challenge for Versailles. Doylestown, Chippewa, yeah, that's a big challenge for them. You play somebody. Now, I'm not a big fan of the polls, and I kind of think we kind of overrate that a little bit because, you know, you're, you've got people who've never seen anybody voting on teams and so on. But certainly they're very, very talented. They're undefeated. They're 28-0, have a good tradition of basketball at Doylestown, Chippewa. And this will be a challenge for your seniors to step up and play well, and I think that's what will happen with Versailles. Yeah, Versailles has some really talented seniors, and Lauren Bruns yep. and Krista Putoff and Taylor Winter and girls like that who have played basketball for a long time, and this is kind of the culmination of everything for them, and they, they're also familiar with State. They've been there. Uh, they, they have, and they, of course they play a very competitive schedule. They laid a regular season loss on the Bath Wild Kittens, one of their few regular season losses. That was an overtime win for them down at Versailles. They're used to playing against good competition. They won't be afraid of the moment. They'll show up and play. So... Versailles is in playing a team yep. that's undefeated. OG, this is their first appearance, yeah. also in Division III. First appearance, girls' state basketball tournament. Right. Very exciting. We'll have the game for you on Friday. You can watch uh, Thursday's state semifinal game that OG will play in on Friday at 9 p.m. on WOSN. But how about the Lady Titans? They're making history. Yeah, they really are. And, of course, this kind of carryover, I think, when you get successful in other sports, it carries over. The soccer program did very well. And I think there's some carryover there. You're used to competing at a high level. And obviously, it translates into a different set of skills. But, yeah. but you're used to competition. And they've been able to do that. And for them, it's been all in defense. Their defense has been outstanding in the tournament. Their press just really makes it yep. difficult on their opponents, and then they can build a quick lead. Senior Alyssa Ellerbrock has played fantastic. Freshman Katie Hempflein has yep. really taken this team over the top, in my opinion. Yeah, I would agree with that. Of course, it all starts with your coaching. Coach Yance done a really good job of instilling what he wants that team to, to do and how he wants them to compete. They had a poor performance against Bath, and it cost him a chance to at least tie for or win the Western Buckeye League Championship. He came back, got his team together. That was early in the season, and they have progressed to this point. They're in the state tournament. Congratulations. D4 girls, Fort Warmy, third yep. straight year they're back at state, so they're used to they're used to this. They are, and of course, there's another carryover. They were very successful in volleyball season, won the state volleyball championship, and some of these young ladies have competed in that particular situation as well. There's some carryover again between being able to compete at a high level. It shows up here. They beat Felicity Franklin in the regional finals after beating Rushi in the regional semis. Felicity Franklin knocked off. Marion local, yeah. so there are a lot of local teams in that D4 area, and Fort Laramie is the one who comes out on top. Yeah, for me, I know there's people you always kind of hope you can get a chance to see play again. For me, it was Allie Toby. Started watching her play when she was a freshman, and her competitiveness and her drive was always fun to watch. She was the MAC Player of the Year. She's now moved on as a senior. Miss watching her play. Well, like for sales though, Fort Laramie is taking on the top-ranked team in their yes, division, Berlin Highland. For Fort Laramie, though, you know you played in a, a, a competitive league. You played a good non-conference schedule, and if you get here, if you get to the state tournament, you are deserving and you belong here. They will compete. Looking forward to see how all of our area teams fare as we make our way towards crowning a champion on the basketball courts. We've got a ton of games coming your way on the West Ohio Sports Network, so let's run through our broadcast schedule as we usually do at the end of the program. It gets started tonight, Wednesday night, 9 p.m. Plymouth vs. Wayne Trace, boys' regional semis from Bowling Green. It's a double overtime thriller you won't want to miss. Follow that up immediately by LCC and OG. 
10.30 tonight, great regional semifinal action from Bowling Green. Tomorrow, Thursday, 10.30, Defiance versus Salina Boys regional semi from Bowling Green. Thursday, 11.45, Lima Senior versus Toledo St. John's regional semis from Toledo. Then Friday, three games for you. 9 p.m., mention the Ottawa Glendorf Girls State semifinals from the Schottenstein Center. Friday at 10, D4 regional finals from Kettering. That'll be Marion Local versus Tri-Village. Friday at 10 p.m. on WTLW. It'll be the D4 regional final for Bowling Green, Wayne Trace versus Delphi St. John's. Saturday, two more for you. The D2 regional finals from Bowling Green. That will feature either Salina or Defiance taking mm -hmm. on an out-of-area team. Saturday at 10 p.m., WTLW, the D3 regional finals from Bowling Green State University. That winner of LG of LCC, excuse me, OG, will be taking on an out-of-area team. Put it on 997 or 44.2 or whatever, whatever you, you watch. call that and just leave yeah. it there. Yeah. And record it That's and right. do just whatever you need there. to do. Watch. DVR the game on the other channel. Get in your fill of high school basketball because a couple weeks from now we'll have to wait a while to get more in. And I know that upsets thought. you, Marshawn. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We can get through the NCAA tournament. When right. you're left with the only basketball to watch is the NBA. So we're going to really live it up these next two weeks. Yes. Hope you do as well. Thanks for joining us on Mark's Madness. Enjoy your games. We'll see you next time.